Hey guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Ruby. In this episode, we're going to be taking what we've learned in the previous episodes of the Redis uh, series, uh, so building an analytic system with Redis. Uh, we're going to take what we've learned so far and we're going to apply it into a Rails project. Uh, so this is the project that I'm, uh, I'm using. So we have a very simple blog. Uh, you know, it's it's not uh, the perfect blog. Uh, you know, it's not completely done, but you know, it'll illustrate the point. So we have an, a list of a post here, and when I click on this, I'll go to the the show page of the post. So uh, taking what we've learned so far, where we want to track the unique visitors and the page views. The best way to track page views and unique visitors for a certain post is on the show page of the post, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take what we've learned and we're going to apply it. So first things first is we need to get Redis set up in our uh, Rails application. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go to my gem file. I'm going to add gem Redis. I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm going to turn off my server, do a bundle. And it's going to install Redis for me. So now, how do I initiate uh, Redis in our application? So what I've done here is I've created a file called redis.rb in the initializers folder, right? So um, the way we can uh, use uh, Redis in our Rails application is all we have to do is just use a global variable. Redis uh, equals redis.new. Now, if your Redis instance is, is not running on localhost, like it's running on another server, uh, go ahead and look at how you can configure uh, so you can pass in the host option over here and a port option. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to use a simple uh, basic local host one, which means I need to start my Redis server uh, before anything will work. So Redis server. All right, so now I've started my Redis server. Uh, so now I have the Redis, uh, you know, uh, the Redis variable here. What I can do is I can now call this in my controller. So for example, uh, I can just do redis.incr, right? So now this is not the most clean way and the most optimized way of doing it, but we're gonna keep things simple in the beginning and we're gonna try and improve our solution as we go along, right? So if, if I remember correctly, we agreed that we're gonna use the, uh, you know, we're gonna design our key in a special way, right? We're gonna use the date. so the year, right? So we're gonna start off with just the, you know, the year. So date dot today dot year. And then we're gonna do the date dot today dot month. And then we're gonna do date dot today dot day. I think that, I think that should work. Uh, let me try it in Rails S, Rails C. So basically that's gonna give us the key that we need. So the next thing we need to do is post and then we're gonna need to put the post ID. So we already have a post instance over here. So what we can do is just use the so post.id, right? So that basically is gonna give us the key pattern that we need, right, for tracking page views. So now we just need to add views. That's basically all we need to do in terms of tracking the, you know, the, the, the page view. Right, um, so let's let's give that a go. Right, so I'm gonna go into my terminal and I'm gonna open up another tab. I'm gonna go into blog me now, Rails S. Start my Rails server, and uh, I'm gonna hit reload on this page. Bam! So there it is. It's already recorded the uh, you know the the page views. So I'm gonna go and start Redis Commander, and go into here and go to localhost. 8081. All right, so here we have it. Um, you know, the, the fifth, that's the new one on the eight, right? Today is the eighth of May. Post one, views, it's one. Check this out. I'm gonna go back to the post and do a reload, right? I'm gonna do a reload here. And we're gonna see that it's now two, right? So every time that page gets loaded, it's going to increment the page view, right? And automatically, because the date is generated dynamically, it's going to change the day based on the actual date. So tomorrow, it's going to track the, you know, the, the posts, the views for the 9th of May, 
right? And so on. So basically the, the 9th, the 10th, 11th of May. So you, you get the idea. So basically that's pretty much all we really need to do in terms of tracking the page views. But here's the problem, right? Now, if I'm going to, uh, you know, do an, another one, a uh, Redis, and I think the, you know, the method that we're going to use for tracking uniques was we're going to use uh, s add, right? So the sets, right? So because we're tracking unique uh, visits, so we we can use the same key. So really, all we need to do is just copy that top line, and uh, we're going to do uniques. Right? So we agreed that um, we're going to use the IP, track the user's IP. So in the local host, we're not going to get much uh, data because uh, you know, in local host, we are accessing our own application. Uh, so the IP address is always going to be the same. It's going to be 127.0.0.1. But then in a production environment where the IP address of the visitor changes, it's going to make a lot of sense. But we're going to implement that anyway. Um, so here's a note uh, on one of the comments on uh, on the video in the previous episode. Someone mentioned that uh, you know tracking unique visits by IP address is not the smartest thing to do. I agree uh, that it's not the smartest thing to do. Actually, to track unique visitors, it's very complicated. You have to do a lot of things. You have to track the cookie, and then you know you you have to be able to. Uh, track if this for example if this person deletes the cookie how do you make sure that it's the same person there's there's a lot of work that they needs to go on to truly track unique visitors a better way than using ip address is just to generate uh you know a unique key uh, and store it in a session right and then you track that session key we're not going to get into that right now um just for simplicity's sake we're just going to use uh, the ip address and uh, if you really want to get into doing unique visits, you can look it up online. There's a ton of resources out there that will show you how to truly track unique visitors. For now, we're just going to use the, uh, the, the IP address. So in Rails, to do that, we can do request.remote underscore IP. Right? So that command is going to return the IP address of the visitor. So um, it's going to add it to the set. right? So let's try that out. I'm going to go and reload my page. All right. So now I'm going to go into Redis Commander to see if it's done its job. Reload there. Uniques. There it is. Look at that. So 127.0.0.1. So um, if you want to use a session or a cookie in the session key, like a unique key, um, all you have to do is just replace this with that session key, like that, that session data that you generated in you know, the previous page or whatever, when the person visits the home page or something. So you know that, okay, this person, uh, you know, has visited uh, this page. So um, now we're just using the IP address. As I mentioned, it's not going to be any different because I'm the same person. Uh, I'm accessing the server from a local uh, environment. So it's just going to always be 127.0.0.1. Um, and the views is just going to keep going up as I, uh, as I go along. So now if I go back into the post and I create a new post or another post, yay, save. And I go back to another post. Now what's going to happen is it's going to start tracking my uh, page views for another post. So if I go here and click on that. So now we have two posts, right? So that's great. So now, you know, we're getting exactly what we, what we need to get from our system, from our analytic system. So let's go back for a second. These keys here are very prone to error and there's a lot of code duplication here that we can clean up. So for example, if we're going to uh, do some tracking uh, on other resources, so right now we just have posts in this, uh, you know, in, this, in this app, it's a very simple app, but what if we have a more complicated app where we have videos, posts, photos, and whatever, and we wanna track the unique visitors and the page views for all of them. Right. We want to be able to reuse this code and just copying and pasting this is, you know, it's kind of, first of all, not clean. Uh, second of all, it's very mundane and, you know, it just looks nasty. So in the next episode, what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to clean all this up, how to make it much cleaner than it is. And, you know, it's it's it should be something which is very simple. And, and the idea is to do something like track views uniques, something like that, you know. And that is super clean, right? 
you know, I'm just thinking of the, you know, the, the domain specific language of what I, I would want to use if I was developing a system like this, right? Uh, so maybe we can do a for uh, with, it's probably better, post. So basically the idea is we're going to track, we're going to say which statistics we're tracking uh, and in the object, right? So something like that is much cleaner to put in your controller than this mess over here, right? So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to abstract and create a nice clean abstraction layer for this, uh, with this sort of tracking, right? All right, so I would like to conclude this episode and in the next episode, I'll show you how to clean all this up.